First of all, let me say I fully agree on the virtue of self-criticism. If I may sum up your words with your permission, I think there are three broad points. In the first place, I understand that you agree that the Arab armies assaulted Israel when it came to life. In other words, what Israel was doing, she was doing is self-defense. Well, there is more to be said to it than that, because, of course, uh, the uh, well, United Declaration Nations, of Independence and so on was, uh, I suppose, from the Arab point of view, a provocation. Provocations was on the basis of the United Nations' decision, and uh, um, every United Nations record attests to that, including those I've quoted. And on July the 15th, 48, Arab position having reached what it had in terms of threat to peace, the yeah. United Nations Security Council uh, considered the situation in the category of threat to peace and uh, said they might have to apply Article 39 in terms of what's to be done in this situation. But you would admit, Professor, I mean, that is a fact, that they did attack us. I mean, yeah. you've got to see it in that context. Now, you argue that facing up to this attack, our people committed two grave atrocities. Number one, the Deir Yassin incident. Yeah. Number two, driving out Arabs and turning them into refugees. Yeah. And now, before I deal with these two points, yeah. and I will in a moment, very central to your thesis is that the Nazi impact of persecution yeah. on the Jewish people brought them to do such atrocities. And you've mentioned uh, the British action bombing civilians in Port Said in yeah. 1956. Now, Professor, in volume 4, page 128F of your study of history, you say that in the history of man's attempt at civilization hitherto, there has never been any society whose progress in civilization has gone so far that in times of revolution or war, its members could be relied upon yeah. not to commit atrocities. And you quote here, yeah. this was written before World War II, yeah. behavior of the German army in Belgium in 1914, yeah. the British black and tans yes. in Ireland in 1920, yeah. the French army in Syria, German National Socialist stormtroops yeah. at home in 1933 before yeah. World War II, yeah. and the Italian black shirts. Am I correct, sir, in assuming that you feel that this is in a record down history? Now, you said that because of the bombing of Britain by yeah. the Germans, a certain state of mind, some impact, some scar yeah. developed in the British consciousness, yeah. and that reflected itself in the bombing of Port Said. Now, the Black and Tans in Ireland was 1920, well over 13 yeah. years before Hitler came to power. And there are many such incidents I could recall. Yes. You could even take during World War II, British bombing yeah. of Berlin. Yes, certainly. Now, would you agree with me that uh, all these instances um, have an element of cruelty which is quite comprehensive in your terms, whether it be the bombing of Berlin in World War II, uh, whether it be earlier the Black and Tans, whether it be Hiroshima, uh, whether it be even the treatment of the early American Indians. Uh, right through this, you feel that there is a sense of atrocity. Now. How do you relate all this to Nazism? Secondly, you agree that there are also Arab massacres of Jewish civilians. I can give you details. If you will come to Israel, yeah. I will show you their graves in frightening yeah. cruelty. And long before Dear yeah. Yassin, to which I'll refer in a minute, were these also in the category of Nazi atrocities? And if so, why don't you say that both sides did things in such a category? Yeah. Why do you choose us? Why do you single us out? Why don't you write of Britain? and of almost every country in the world, according to your own definition. Yeah. And finally, a word in Dear Yassin, I suggest some refugees, we'll talk it later as, as a separate yes. part. But in Dear Yassin, I would say this. Uh, Dear Yassin took place after a series of massacres, such as the destruction of uh, 50 Jewish laborers in Haifa in December 1947, convoy after convoy, the well-known convoy to Yechiyam, in which we lost 40 people, the blowing up of Ben Yehuda, 50 people killed in Jerusalem, 70 wounded, under enormous provocation. It was a city under siege. In your own survey of international studies, written by Dr. Kirk under your editorship, he quotes yeah. the commander of the Irgun uh, at the yeah. time as having said that his men suffered heavy casualty, appreciable casualties, and those responsible for that action have claimed that the Arab uh, residents of the village were warned to leave the houses and that this tragedy developed through hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and indeed uh, the commander of the operation was killed. But I would add, be that as it may, this action was condemned in most vigorous terms by the Jewish agency of the time, and a message of regret was sent to King Abdullah of Jordan. We heard no such expressions of regret for Arab massacres, although they were undertaken within the category of armed offensive against us. So to sum up, sir, what I would ask you, 
Do you agree that there is a line linking every act of atrocity committed by soldiers in various countries and down the ages? If so, would you agree that this odium of a Nazi impact would be attached to all such nations, not only to Israel, including to the Arabs, for what they did to us, and particularly since they attacked us and we were operating our self-defense? And uh, on Dir Yassin and refugee matter, we'll talk to it later. Yes. Well, I suppose the Arabs could uh, match uh, atrocity. You, Mr. Ambassador, gave uh, shortly, so very, uh, you could give many more instances yeah. of Arab massacres of Jews, and they could give uh, many, many, I suppose, of... Uh, well, by the way, sir, uh, if yeah. I may just interrupt yeah. you. At the end of the first week after the yeah. November 29th resolution, yes. 105 Jews were killed and many more injured. In mm -hmm. one week, right after the resolution yes. in December 1947. Yes. This is on record. But uh, there were things on both sides. Now, about my own country, as you say, in a volume published between the wars, I did mention um, things my own country had done of this kind. And um, if I had uh, not published this volume uh, two years before the uh, aggression against Egypt, I would uh, certainly have mentioned uh, my country's aggression in this context. Um, I couldn't because I wrote, published in 54, and the thing happened in 56. It was a thing which the uh, Indians call karma, which is um, the uh, chain of uh, moral evil. It's a generalization of what I tried to suggest before, that um, it's something in human nature which makes us uh, pass on to against other people the evil that has been uh, done to us. And I agree with the ambassador that this is um, a very general and a very um, horrible thing in uh, human life. But um, I also feel very strongly that, as the uh, Buddha felt when he emphasized this chain of karma, that uh, that is not an excuse. We can't just say, well, this is part of human nature, everybody does it or has done it at some time, therefore we can uh, all get away with it and mutually, so to speak, condone uh, what uh, each of us does. We have to break this chain. Now, coming back to the uh, Israel case, I know very well that uh, there are Many people, no doubt a majority in Israel, who uh, were horrified at those massacres done by some Israeli armed forces. And the Israelis are a rather small minority of the people of uh, Jewish religion in the world. And uh, I'm sure that the majority of Jews in the world, as far as they knew about this, were also horrified. And uh, their responsibility, one has a slight responsibility for anyone's co religionist do. I feel a slight responsibility for what my Protestant Christian uh, co-religions of European race are doing at this moment in South Africa, and a much greater one for what my English Protestant co-religionists are doing in Rhodesia and, uh, say, uh, Kenya. But these degrees of responsibility are limited. I would make the point that all Israel has implicated itself, so to speak, in the uh, uh, results of that uh, flight, partly flight, partly uh, expulsion, to a smaller extent, massacre of the Palestinian Arabs, because uh, uh, they have taken and held uh, the land and the property, which uh, is legally and rightfully still that of the Arabs. Now, putting it bluntly, this is um, robbery, and I'm sure it is on the Jewish conscience. And this is um, a continuing thing, which has to be cleared up, first of all, by the uh, Jews themselves, uh, primarily the uh, uh, Israelis, but uh, it also does concern uh, all Jewish communities all over the world who uh, make Israel's existence possible by their financial and also by their political support, particularly the uh, Canadians and uh, United States citizens who are Jews by uh, religion, who have the greatest financial power and the um, uh, strongest political say in this uh, matter. So uh, we have this uh, continuing question of um, how to break the chain of karma, how to uh, prevent the uh, wrong that has been done, uh, which was bred, I agree, by previous wrongs from breeding further wrongs in its turn. I have been in the refugee camps in the Gaza Strip, and I have uh, heard the songs that the children sing in their schools. If you wanted to uh, see what it was like to be a Jew, say, 13 or 14 years after Nebuchadnezzar exiled the Jews. Go to the Gaza Strip and you will and study the spirit and state of mind of the um, uh, Arabs there. They're saying um, just the same things, and feeling just the same things that uh, the Jews felt then, have continued to feel uh, later. This was our country. We uh, uh, mean to return. Professor, Please. Yeah. Yes. 
You'll pardon me if I come back to the original issue. I'll, I said, I said yeah. again, I'll deal with the refugee matter in a minute. Yes. But the yes. original issue was a question of comparing what we did morally to what yes. the Nazis did to us. Now, I think it's been established that um, there was a war of aggression against us. Uh, I've given some background to the Dear Yassin yes. massacre. I will deal later with the refugee yes. matter. But from what I understand from the quotation I gave and from what you've now elaborated, would you agree, Professor, that this stigma of comparison, of moral comparison, applies not only to our people, but to those Arabs who were responsible for massacres, the ones I detailed, and many more I can give you a list, mm -hmm. to most of the nations of the world who at any time, their soldiers in war, even in self-defense, have been guilty of atrocity. I've distinguished sharply, though uh, this is difficult, but this is one of the necessary and valuable conventions of human society between suffering, death, mutilation caused uh, in fighting between uh, uh, organized and uniformed armed forces and massacres by uh, people uh, of civilians behind the front. Accepted, this accepted. accepted. I'm, I'm referring any instances in history, and when you talk here of atrocity, you do not mean act between the combatants. You mean no. atrocities committed by military people against civilians. Yes. And you've quoted certain allegations yes. against us, which I'll deal with separately. But suppose from your standpoint, yes. the extreme standpoint, and so our propaganda claims, that we were guilty of the atrocity in that form. But do you admit, sir, that the similar guilt attaches to nearly every country in the world? For at some time or other, as you yourself have said in your quote, no society, as members can be relied on, not to commit atrocities in time of war revolution. And again, I say, even if it's in self-defense. I agree that uh, uh, most societies have committed atrocities, but I do not think that uh, condones atrocities. I didn't and say I, so, sir. No, 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 no. I agree with no. you on that. But I mean, you do agree that this same element, this comparison, can be applied on a universal level to any country which in war its soldiers have committed trust against civilians. Yes, atrocities are atrocities, and murder is murder, right. whoever commits it. And that yes. would apply also, sir, yes. in case of, uh, of Arab atrocities against Jewish civilian population? Well, of course. Yes, yes. and the black yes. and tans? Of course. For the United States? Yes. Early Indians? Yes. A uh, whole ream is limitless. In other words, that what you were saying, if I now yes. understand it, was that within a general category, of denouncing violence or atrocities by military people against civilians, that Israel, in your opinion, was not separate from the rest of mankind, but was guilty of the same thing as others. Of course I don't think that uh, uh, Israelis are different from mankind. I'm not an anti-Semite to think they're not human. No, I meant to the contrary. Yes, I meant to the contrary. I know, I know. Professor, what I meant was this, that you do not... You do, you, uh, what you're saying is that you Israelis cannot claim uh, to be stand above the rest of mankind uh, because what they've all done uh, in time of war, yeah. even in self-defense, uh, you've also done. Would that be uh, correct, sir? I also, it's curious to me to defend the Germans and the Nazis of all people because I've, um, my country suffered in two wars of aggression by the Germans. But uh, they too are human and uh, what the Nazis did is not uh, peculiar. And uh, I mean, well, uh, uh, not peculiar in the sense that the ambassador has uh, explained that um, this unhappily is uh, something that is in all human nature and we have to break. Now, why I brought up the case of the Israelis in this connection was uh, simply the practical fact that I was uh, uh, writing about the Palestine question and about the question between uh, Jews and uh, Gentiles in the world. But it would apply uh, to any other nation too. And in, as the ambassador has quoted in um, other places in my book, I brought up uh, cases in which um, I took my examples from the British and the French and uh, uh, 